Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about nausea and pregnancy, emesis gravidarum and hyperemesis gravidarum. First we will talk about emesis gravidarum. This is a little bit different from the typical morning sickness that occurs in as much as 85% of women, as in morning sickness vomiting does not usually occur, but emesis means vomiting and gravidarum means during pregnancy. So this condition describes the typical morning sickness, but together with vomiting. It is a type of vomiting that occurs in around 50% of pregnant women and starts typically two to four weeks after conception, so around the time that the expected menstruation is missed or a little bit later than that. It usually lasts until the 12th to 16th week of pregnancy so it usually subsides in the second trimester. Statistics show that women that are pregnant for the first time and those who have more than one baby in the same pregnancy are more likely to be affected. In around 1-2% of pregnancies, hyperemesis gravidarum develops. It is a more severe form of emesis gravidarum, but we will go into more detail about that later. Emesis gravidarum presents usually as a morning nausea with vomiting on empty stomach. Due to the emptiness of the stomach, also often heartburn and initial weight loss develop. It is not really known why emesis gravidarum develops during pregnancy, but it is thought to be related to the increase in the hormone HCG, the one that is also tested for in a normal pregnancy test. How do we treat emesis gravidarum? The treatment can be divided into pharmacological treatment and non-pharmacological treatment. Usually a change in diet, so a non-pharmacological approach, is the first line treatment. Women are advised to follow a diet high in carbohydrates and proteins, but low in fat. Also very spicy or excessively sweet foods should be avoided. Ginger tea is said to help with nausea. Another advice for the patient is to take in smaller meals more frequently, such as every two to three hours, especially before going to bed, so that the stomach won't be completely empty in the morning, and to maintain a good fluid intake, as with the vomiting also water is lost. The pharmacological treatment includes antacids and antiemetics, so medications that reduce the stomach acidity and medications that reduce the nausea. Here it has to be kept in mind that during pregnancy we have to pay special attention to which medications can be used. And acids that are used during pregnancy include histamine 2 receptor antagonists and proton pump inhibitors. Antiemetics that can be used during pregnancy include meclicine, demenhydrinate and diphenhydramine. Now we will talk about hyperemesis gravidarum. Hyperemesis gravidarum is an exaggerated form of emesis gravidarum. It is extreme persistent nausea and vomiting during the first trimester of pregnancy, with usually more than three to four times of vomiting per day, together with more than 5% of weight loss, counting from the pre-pregnancy weight. Hyperemesis gravidarum can lead to dehydration, electrolyte imbalances, excessive thirst and decreased urinary output, heartburn, hypotension, hypoglycemia and hypochloremia. It is more common in women with multiple babies in the same pregnancy, in women who are pregnant for the first time and in patients that had migraines or gastroesophageal reflux disease since before the pregnancy. How can we diagnose hyperemesis gravidarum? The clinical presentation is usually quite a good indicator, but we can also make laboratory diagnostic examinations, such as the electrolyte levels, which usually show hypokalemia, so low levels of potassium, and hypochloremia, so low levels of chloride. Also, metabolic alkalosis or metabolic acidosis are both possible. Also, signs of dehydration, such as an increased hematocrit, are usually seen. Also, ketonuria is usually present in a urine analysis, so this means that the urine will contain ketone bodies. How can we treat hyperemesis gravidarum? 
Also here, non-pharmacological treatment, as in emesis gravidarum, is the first approach. When this is insufficient, antiemetics, antacids, and in many cases also a rehydration therapy with either oral or intravenous fluids is indicated to refill the fluid levels in the body, but also to bring the electrolytes back into balance. In patients where symptoms persist, even though medication is given, enteral feeding is recommended. Hyperemesis gravidarum should be evaluated carefully and treatment should be given if necessary, as maternal and fetal complications can arise. Maternal complications are hypokalemia, which can lead to cardiac arrhythmia, muscle weakness, hyporeflexia and fatigue, and Wernicke encephalopathy. Wernicke encephalopathy is an acute neurological complication due to B1 deficiency, also called thiamine deficiency, and malnutrition that can lead to the triad of confusion, of thalmoplegia, so paralysis or weakness of the muscles of the eyes, and ataxia, so a poor muscle control and unsafe gait. It requires a supplementation of thiamine. Fetal complications are intrauterine growth restriction so that the baby does not grow as much as it is expected to grow for its gestational age, a low birth weight, so below 2.5 kg for a baby born at term, and a possible preterm birth, so a delivery before 37 weeks of pregnancy. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much and hopefully see you again in the next video.